good shepherd of your people. Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name do you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done, to someone who was sick, and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. 
And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us and by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. 
just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are, do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In a few moments, we will baptize Abby and Layla, sisters who are six and seven, respectively. What's interesting about a baptism for candidates who are not infants is there is much more cognition and curiosity and craving. In a sense, Abby and Layla understand more profoundly that their baptism is a sacrament of belonging, a welcoming into the full membership of the body of Christ. One of Hickory Neck's uh, strongest gifts is that powerful gift of welcome. You talk to any newer or longer term member and they will likely tell you that Hickory Neck's warm welcome was what drew them to this place and made them linger. There was a sense of inclusion and care that made them want to stay. For a community so skilled in welcoming, especially as a community who will be welcoming Abby and Layla today, we hear a powerful word from John's Gospel about life with the Good Shepherd. For people familiar with the lectionary, the fourth Sunday of Easter, affectionately known as Good Shepherd Sunday, is a favorite Sunday. Every year on this Sunday, we hear about Jesus' proclamation that he is the Good Shepherd. This year's text in John tells us how Jesus the Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, how Jesus will protect the sheep, how he knows the sheep and the sheep know him, and that there are other sheep that don't even belong to the flock that Jesus will be bringing into the beloved fold. When we hear a text like this, we get a warm and fuzzy feeling, the kind of feeling of protected belonging that we want Abby and Layla to always feel with Jesus and with the church community. That feeling of care and belonging has inspired artwork and song and liturgies and sermon alike. This Good Shepherd Sunday reminds us all of what inspired us to keep coming back to this modern incarnation of the Good Shepherd's fold here at Hickory Neck. Now the challenge about the warm, fuzzy feelings from today and that come with that sense of belonging is that chasing a sense of belonging can become consumeristic. A pursuing of a feeling received without any expectation of reciprocity. The pursuit of belonging certainly makes sense. As one scholar suggests, forming authentic and holistic community is hard work. We dole out only parts of ourselves in stingy bits and pieces, avoid being vulnerable with others. We hold back our thoughts and our feelings. We're afraid to confront each other. We judge each other without mercy, hold grudges, and set impossibly high standards for ourselves and for others. We have a difficult time trusting each other, which makes real and life-giving community really hard. But belonging with Jesus and with a faith community is not something that is just received. 
Belonging comes with obligation. No longer are we individuals feeling alone. Now we are a part of a larger whole. Though beautiful, that whole does not work without each of its members. Receiving that warm and fuzzy feeling of belonging results in the action of giving, of contributing in your own right to the community. Now, the good news is that although we use language about welcome at Hickory Neck, what we actually mean is belonging. Yes, we were likely greeted warmly, or maybe we're given a welcome gift, or we're sent a greeting by mail soon after our first visit. And we are often recognized or engaged in, after the service at coffee hour. But I can't tell you the number of people at Hickory Neck who have told me how accessible involvement and even leadership is here from stories of being recruited to lead fall festivals within the first year of membership, to hopping in as an usher or a reader, to being invited to Bible study, service opportunities, or a foyer group, to becoming a financial supporter of the community. You are not just welcomed here, you are invited into belonging here. Though we may not use those strong words of obligation or responsibility, we teach through our behavior that warm welcome means full membership in the body of Christ. We join in not because we have to, but because the warmth of the good shepherd's inclusion of all overwhelms us into wanting to give back, both here inside these walls and outside of these walls in the wider community. And that is what we have been teaching Abby and Layla about baptism. Today, as water is poured over their heads and oil is rubbed onto their foreheads, they will be welcomed into full membership in the body of Christ. And even though age six and seven might seem too young for obligations of membership in the body, we need their gifts just as much as they need the gift of belonging. So when they bring forward the communion elements or participate in godly play or join in in singing and song, they make our community complete. They remind us of the broadness of God's inclusion the power of being known, and the resultant discipleship that springs out of us, no matter size, age, or ability. Today, the Good Shepherd welcomes Abby and Layla into the fold, into the body of Christ. Today, Abby and Layla invite us to renew our sense of belonging in that same fold and all that belonging entails. For that, we give thanks to God. Amen.
this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God. I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. I do. do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I, I do. do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. This next question is for all of you, the response being, we will. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with these persons who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Please stand as you're able. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite our children to come forward. beginning of 
creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus Christ, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here are cleansed from sin and born again, and may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Layla Marie, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. and Layla, we invite you to receive these candles as a symbol of Christ's light now shining in you, that others may see your light and give glory to God. Amen. Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon these, your servants, the forgiveness of sin, and have raised them to new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith that Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
a big thank you to all of the folks who volunteered and were donors for Sleep in Heavenly Peace. We uh, built uh, mini beds last weekend, and this weekend we delivered many of them. So thank you to all of you who participated. I know it was a powerful experience. I've already heard from many of you about that, so thank you for being representatives of Christ's light out in the world. We are so grateful for you. Tonight, I hope you will come back at 5 p.m. We have Coral Evensong. The Christopher Wren Singers will be leading us in music tonight and would love to have you with us. There will be a light reception afterwards, so come on out and enjoy a beautiful evening uh, and close your day with prayer. This week on Wednesday at noon, you are invited to join me for lunch. Uh, we'll be over in the Wilkinson Center. It's a bring a dish to share kind of lunch, so it's just a great time of fellowship to catch up spend a little bit of time together. It's also a great opportunity to visit with folks from the other service, the 8 o'clock, who we usually get a good mixture, so come on out and join us on Wednesday at noon. And then next Sunday, I'm going to need you to buckle up because it's going to be a crazy Sunday. We've got a lot going on, but it is all really wonderful stuff. For you all, it starts at 9 o'clock. We have our Rector's Forum. We do this quarterly, and it's a great chance to just sort of hear what's going on in the church, uh, maybe things you've seen, things behind the scenes, what's, what's happening, what is coming up, and then a great time for any questions or concerns you have. I'm there to answer them, and I'm happy to do that with you. So that'll be at our 9 o'clock formation hour. Then at this service, at 10 o'clock, we're going to be welcoming some guest singers. We have uh, from Hawthorne Christian Academy. It's in New Jersey. They are going to be performing on Saturday in a competition, but have asked to lead music in our service on Sunday. So they will be here, all 38 of them. So come and hear some beautiful music. It is really stunning and will flow right into the way that we worship normally. This service will also be an instructed Eucharist. So if you've ever had questions about, like, why do we do the things that we do and what, what's happening with that book and why don't we use that or what's in the bulletin or how's this working, this will be the service for you. So we will be pausing at various points during the service to do a little bit of teaching about why we're doing what we're doing. And your bulletin will be a great resource. It'll be annotated, so you'll be able to see notes along the margins about what this means, why we do it, some really great pondering reflections in there. So it's really going to be a really wonderful time. And as part of that, our very own Caroline and Chloe will be celebrating their first communion with us next Sunday. So they will be um, doing that as part of our liturgy. So it's a really wonderful and full service. We hope you will stay, certainly for coffee hour, our ladies are welcome to go over and enjoy ladies' brunch afterwards, um, but should be a really boisterous and wonderful time of worship. So please do come out, support all of our um, young folks and our guests, um, and we can't wait to see you next week. I think those are the big things. Did I miss any of those big things? Okay, yes. What? Oh, and fish is next week, too. Just add it to the list. Just throw in some groceries as you're coming into church, and you can do all the things, and it will be wonderful. Uh, quick note about communion. Um, when you come forward, the ushers will direct you forward when the time is appropriate. If you'll just hold out your hand, you can get a regular wafer, or if you need gluten-free, let us know. We're happy to give you a gluten-free wafer. Uh, we are drinking from a common cup at this time, so if that's not comfortable for you, uh, we believe that receiving the bread is receiving communion in its fullness, so you do not have to receive from the cup should you so desire. Uh, also, if you prefer not to receive communion but would just like a blessing today, simply cross your arms over your chest, and we're happy to give you a blessing as well. Uh, and if you do need communion brought to your seat, just let, us, let an usher know, and we're happy to do that as well. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead claiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We, we praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you for our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ, reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever.
God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.